if you don't vote, you don't count. Uh, the exact uh, first origins of this quote is debated, but it is a familiar phrase we hear when discussing electoral politics. We know that as young people, unfortunately, we vote in lower numbers than our older peers. Although there was an increase, and it was mentioned previously, in the number of young people casting their vote back in 2019 during the AP elections, it is a general truth and trend that as young people we vote in lower numbers than our older peers. The spring Eurobarometer towards the EU elections shows that 55% of young voters intend to vote versus 67 of older age groups. However, should as young people be written off because we don't norm normally vote in the same percentages as uh, older generations. The truth is that as young people, we are not inactive citizens. We are more active, but we are in other forms of activism and in other forms of participation, such as mass protest, occupy movements, and political engagement, also via social media. 61% of young people in the EU are involved in some sort of youth clubs, millions are members of youth organizations, and that make up uh, also the membership of us, the European Youth Forum. Not to mention that Fridays for Future, in reality, they inspired the European Green Deal. So I will not classify this as an in inactivity. Moreover, at the end of the day, why as young people we should vote if political parties at the end of the day, they are not taking our concerns into consideration or even addressing them in their political programs. Young people, we are the most underrepresented age group in the European Parliament. While one in five Europeans is between the ages of 18 to 35, just one in 15 MEPs are in the same age group. And in fact, fun fact, we found out that uh, three, uh, that there are as many MEPs under the age of 30 as there are MEPs named Martin. Uh, they were six, now they are three actually, because they change, they had birthday and people change uh, the age group. We know that you do not necessarily need, of course, to be young, to be supportive uh, and sympathetic to youth issues. But if young people don't feel that we are represented in parliaments, then it's less likely to actually engage and less likely to go and vote. We need to have more young people as candidates on the list of political parties with a genuine like likelihood of being elected. As young people, we need to be able to see our, democratic, our demographic represented in the political power structures. And this is why, as a European Youth Forum, we came up with our Youth Manifesto ahead of next year's EU elections. And this manifesto is a list of 20 demands that suggest areas of concrete policy focus that, if implemented, would lead to a better future for Europe's youth and give us something to vote for and even a motivation. And allow me here to make a reference to mainstreaming youth. Mainstreaming youth is essential so policies are relevant, responsive and effective in addressing the diverse challenges and opportunities faced by us as young people. It also contributes to the overall goal of creating more equitable and sustainable societies by harnessing the potential of us, the young people. All policies have a significant impact on our lives as the decisions made today will have the longest consequences on us. And we need to find suitable ways for including the youth perspective so we ensure that young people, we are not just passive recipients of policies, but active agents of the real change. And I'm taking now the initiative to share with you the EU Youth Test, for example, as one of our headline demands within the manifesto. EU Youth Test, and thank you, Maria Cola, for mentioning it uh, previously, 
It is a tool that ensures that every EU law would be reviewed for its impact on young people. Every policy department, for example, in the European Commission, would have to consider young people when they are actually creating a policy. Young experts would be consulted also. And most crucially, mitigation measures would be proposed and implemented if a negative impact is identified on a group of young people or on young people as a whole. And what a better signal to young people across Europe that they matter uh, than to implement such a straightforward tool of checking how they would be affected. And this is already done for the SMEs, small and mid-sized enterprises. If SMEs are provided this assessment, then why not the 25% of the total population in Europe not to be also considered uh, in as much detail? Another demand in our manifesto uh, pertains to the rule of law, our main thematic of today. The EU should use fast and effective measures and a clearly defined procedure to stop infringements on rule of law fundamental rights and values and civic space by member states governments. And take the example of the issues that national youth councils are facing in some countries, recently also ours in Cyprus, unfortunately. Certain member state governments are freezing out both politically and financially youth councils that are democratically constituted youth-led and independent from the government. And instead of listening to and valuing the, perspective, the representative view, they prefer to set up government-led organizations to replace them. And this cannot continue, of course. And our democracies only thrive when civic space and young people's right to participate without fear of retribution from the government is safeguarded. Thus, the next European Parliament needs to defend this right and needs to commit to addressing uh, shrinking civic space in all forms uh, that this occurs. There are also practical reasons why young people do not vote. A staggering 68% of young people who didn't vote back in 2019 stated they didn't do so because of practical reasons, not ideological ones, and not the myth that exists, they were on holidays or away from home. This opens up a question uh, regarding the future prospects of e-voting and postal voting, but for now also highlights the importance of the development and availability of resources for the first time in young voters to actually facilitate their registration and their participation. And this is particularly important for those who will be voting away from home, such as students, or those that they will need to register from a new, often rented address for the very first time. Political parties, local governments, youth organizations, councils should take coordinated efforts in order to ensure that such resources are actually available and tailored to every national context. And these are just a few suggestions in our manifesto that political parties need to take seriously in order to win young voters. The most important is to take our concerns seriously and commit to addressing them in their political parties uh, programs. We also need to rethink the restrictions of democratic participation. At some countries at the age of 16, you can work, you can drive, you can make medical decisions, you can join a political party, you can get married or even enter a civil partnership, you can consent to lawful sexual intercourse, and you can apply even for your own social housing. Despite all this, young people are all over Europe are being denied to their right to have a say or on, on, on issues that matter to them. The majority of the 16 and 17 years old are not eligible to vote. Young people pay tax and have no say over how this is spent. They are criminally liable, yet have no say over the criminal justice system that governs this liability. From employment, taxation, and schooling, to youth services, housing, and health, young people 
already have valuable experiences and perspectives which would hugely enrich and inform debates on policy areas to take forward in political programs at all possible levels. However, their voices are not included or valued as experts in the majority of democracies in this formal way. Young people have the longest to live with the key issues of today. It was also mentioned previously from one of the speakers of the panel, from climate change to environmental degradation, the COVID-19 pandemic and social and racial justice. All these areas have serious consequences for young people of the present and the future. Yet once again, young people cannot choose the politicians that they will make these decisions. The situation does not need to stay like this. We can finally match young people's interest and level of social and political involvement, and they already exhibit at the 16 age and give them the right to vote. In making such a change, we can also ensure new generations develop early voting and registration habits. Letting young people vote while still at work will spark this habit all while they are still supported by their teachers, of course, and educators who explain the processes and its importance. We are encouraged as a European Youth uh, Forum that uh, we see a development in Belgium and in Germany happening next year, uh, that 16 years old young people will vote for the very first time during the EP elections. And there are also the examples of Austria and Malta that already the practice exists for quite some years. It is a once in a lifetime opportunity to get people to vote as part of a wider environment that promotes civic education, of course. In short, in order to truly engage the next generation of young people in the build up to the next elections, but also beyond, we need to finally give them the right and the access to tools to participate and of course, to vote. On behalf of the European Youth Forum, uh, allow me to thank all the Cyprus Forum team for this incredible uh, two days work. Also the people on the front line, the people on the backstage. And um, uh, I will share with you that uh, we really need such spaces and keep giving us oxygen with your spaces that you're creating for more democracy and more transparency. Thank you very much.